I felt like God wasn't going to be pleased with us as a couple mm. if we had more than one bank account or more than one, yeah, more than one account. Because yeah. I, I really feared if we didn't do the way we the were taught, said. I feared God would do something bad to me. You know what I'm saying? And not mm. knowing that that's not the God we serve. Yeah. So thank you for joining his wife, her husband. Our purpose is to help you build and sustain your marriage from a biblical perspective. We are in, what I feel unequally yoked right now. Pray for me. He don't do a lot, but he doing the most. If I'm doing the most, that means she ain't doing enough. Anyway, um, what are we doing? Oh, so we're on, we're on a unequally yoked series um we thought it would be a good idea to um just kind of, kind of continue in some of the things that um i feel like couples are unequally yoked in and so we started with uh actually we did it was a year ago we talked about equally yoked and uh, got a lot of feedback from it and then uh one of our family one of the his wife or husband family members asked us to do something from my perspective my side of the uh being equally yoked and then my daughter heard it and she just thought about some other things and then my wife had a great idea that we should just kind of do uh, i think my wife said in a comment that couples are unequally yoked in their marriage and it kind of i guess struck me that it does happen you know what i'm saying uh, you know the couples are not on one accord so what we decided to do here next to me. what we decided to do was do a series of issues where couples may be unequally yoked and um even from that point um let's, i guess you put it on by the way uh from that point to tackle those issues and to use our own our own story mm -hmm. uh to kind of give you some insights on some of the things that we did hopefully it helps you know it'll help you all out and uh, give you guys some um some answers, some wisdom, uh, based some on what we insight. do. Insight. Screw up, son, because I, I which the way, Patrick? To the right. It's it's me because it's the camera. You know how I set it up. Y'all forgive me. We we'll, we gonna figure out uh, what to do. We we'll get a team. Pray God for a team. What team? Out. All right. So um, I am. Uh, I also wanted to share too that doing our uh, reviewing over the uh, unequally yoked and just kind of going over some things like we've been helped ourselves right. our, ourselves that's good so, yeah so you know you never again our purpose is to help build and sustain and that sustaining is maintaining like you stop and you look back you you get yourself uh feedback you mm -hmm. basically you you evaluate where you are what you uh, need improvement in what you can stop doing what you can start doing that's mm -hmm. that uh sustaining right um Anyway, yeah. So we would. I was thinking about. I was thinking about being a successful marriage, and I was using uh, something that Kenan said in, in in the option plays. When you are first getting to an option, you're doing. You're trying to manage your. It's loss management or risk management. Mm -hmm. But when you're profiting in the option plays, then it's profit management. Mm -hmm. So there are couples who are doing well, and you want to stay well. So you want to manage the profit or manage the success that you have in your marriage and so you have to set limits or stops boundaries boundaries in the marriage to help maintain the success uh that you already have so yeah and a key word is management correct that stewardship so yes it's That's in good. order so anyway today's <laughs> subject is in the subject of finances keep going this is sarcasm day. I don't know what the day is. So mark this day. Today is sarcasm day for just, Shamika. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, but um, no, you're not. I, I was. No, you're not. I just want to pick on you. Whatever. You don't let me. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. So. Um, so yeah. So what we what we were talking about? One of the issues, one of the uh, topics that 
couples uh, have a tendency to be unequally yoked in is in the area of finances. I just said that. Thank you, Patrick, for reiterating that you said that and that I just simply reiterated what you said. All right. And so I would desire. So I'm tell you, I'm gonna tell you why she why she so whatever. She got a little braids in her hair. You gonna you know name what I'm saying? me? She got a, a boys yaki, in the hood hairstyle. My yaki and yeah, go ahead. Ooh. Okay, but anyway, so um, again, we want to we we are here to help you build and sustain in the area of finances. <laughs> and so finances are definitely needed in a marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and, and it's needed not only in a marriage, but even in building a family and legacy. So we can't be dismissive of it. So, yeah, and a lot of marriages actually dissolve. They come to an end as a result of not having adequate, sufficient, or uh, being able to manage well mm-hmm. finances. So it's important. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we think that if we have more money, going back to what you shared about having, um, having a lot of money we automatically assume that it's being managed well right uh not that's not the case uh that's not that's not so in in some cases in some cases people can have a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of money but it is not managed well and then by the same token people can have what uh some may consider meager uh earnings meager income and they're still uh managing it well and they're not allowing it to infiltrate their relationship with each other because they are managing it well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything you want to say? I'll uh, just go ahead and just get into it. Okay. So one of the things that I did want to share that you want is to start with how how we were unequally yoked in the beginning. Is that because I thought that's the direction we were trying to go. You can so, go for it. I didn't. I didn't really want to, but yeah, we can. That we can was do the it. whole purpose that we we had this discussion before we started this. That is that so this true. This is the direction that we were going to go. You're such a good leader. That's true. I don't know if that's sarcasm so, or what. That's true. Hey, boo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stop. Okay. So, um, so one of the ways that Patrick and I were unequally yoked in our finances was that um, we 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 didn't we didn't we were not on one accord as far as our thinking mm-hmm. as far as how uh, the finances should have been handled. So initially. Uh, one of the things that me and Patrick was just kind of going over uh, the uh, the other day is that I came from a single um, single mother mm-hmm. uh, household, uh, a long legacy of single mothers. So I didn't really see a male presence there. And so, um, yeah. So when it came to trusting a man with money, mm-hmm. that was out the window. And so my uh, the, the the matriarch of of my family. She made sure she told told uh, me anyway. I know I'm pretty sure she told the other women as they were going into adulthood to make sure you always have you a stash and you make sure that you have you some money set aside mm-hmm. for to take care to take care of yourself. And so when Patrick and I got married, uh, I always remembered that. And uh, and Patrick, uh, by, on on the flip side, he grew up in a two parent household where his father made I sure. Can, I can tell my own story. Tell your story. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone. Go ahead. No, oh, you like me. that man. You like me. I do. Go ahead. Yeah, you go. So, so in my household, my dad. So the dynamics is my mom couldn't work though. So I guess that's the. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the word is, but so my dad was the only one that's work. I think my mom's getting disability, but in terms of taking care of everything that was needed, I saw my mom trust my dad to make sure everything is taken care of. Now, here's a, here's a, here's a trip. I always talk about the relationship between my dad. It was like during the glass. You can see it, but you couldn't touch it because I didn't really have a relationship with my dad growing up. But when I look back, all of the things that I saw him do, he taught me by action, not necessarily by you know, words of wisdom being imparted into me. So uh, there were a couple of things. My dad had a, a lamp that he will always keep I guess like a um, an emergency stash that was there under the lamp. You remember that? Do you remember that? Um, there was a certain amount of money that he would keep in his wallet. Uh, he was very frugal. I don't know if because because of the job. I don't know what it was, but he had two cars. Uh, one, but just in case the other one broke down, 
he could use the other car while it's in the shop. Uh, he never bought brand new cars. Um, he bought mentally used, is that right? Mentally used clothes. Mentally used clothes. I do that now, or especially at, mm-hmm. uh, like at Play Doh's or Goodwill. And um, and so he always makes sure that. Oh, the other thing was, whenever the gas tank was halfway full, to him it was empty, mm-hmm. and so he made sure the gas stayed in. And just a lot of those things I saw my dad do. And again, the dynamic was my my mom really had to trust my dad because yeah. he was the one that would go to the bank to to the bank every Friday and you know cast the checks and you know, whatever the case may be. Get the things to, that was needed for the house. Groceries, because sure. again, my mom is come found to a wheelchair, so she can't go. So he go to grocery shopping. He is he going out to pay because at that time you had to go pay MLG and W go go to pay the light bill. Um, Cell phone bill. You, I mean, not cell phone bill. The house bill. And yeah. yes, back then they had house phones. House phones. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I do still remember your number. <laughs> okay, I remember too. Uh, what is it? Seven eight five zero four eight four. That's what's up. Uh, so I saw my dad take care of everything, and my mom trust my dad to the fullest. And she, he made sure she had all of her snacks and her skins and stage plants and. You know whatever it is that she needed, and, and um, so I'm coming into the marriage thinking that's how it that's yeah, how it that's works. How it yeah, mm-hmm. and so again, so as you can see, we were unequally yoked. Now, right. mind you, that Patrick and I got married when when we got married, we didn't have marriage counseling, right? And so we didn't get to talk and discuss and and expose these uh, things that we had seen. We had no uh, no earthly structure or guidance to help us navigate through possible roadblocks Mm -hmm. that uh could come up and sure enough this was one that did come up um and i would say that it didn't come up like in a very uh hostile way it was just again uh philosophies or examples that we saw whether it was stated or it was just seen by example Mm -hmm. and so um one of the one of the areas i would say i can remember that i was working patrick was working and it was just kind of like, you know, uh, it came time to, to take care of our living expenses. And it's like, what you need to know what I made for? Right. Like, hey, just tell me what you need. <laughs> and and he's like, well, what you mean? Like, wh- why are you saying it like that? Yeah. Well, you know, I came from a, a very defensive standpoint, but he's coming from a caring standpoint. But I didn't know that. I had never seen a man uh, care for a woman like that, you know, to be fully committed like that. And so he had to walk me through. Now, mind you, I know that uh, from the previous Unequally Yo, um, I, I mentioned one of my go-tos was prayer. And so uh, I will say that then and even to now and even through the journey, I did stay very prayerful because the Lord was my Heavenly Father. He really did help me navigate or he really do help me navigate through those things that I'd never seen before. And so, um, and for, mm-hmm. so to go with that, for me, I considered it considered her not t- telling me like, well, okay, what you making for me? It was like, I, it was almost like she didn't trust me. Mm-hmm. So again, she's coming from single parent home. Uh, the, single the mother. Single mother. You have to emphasize that. And listen. Then her mom single, was pretty much single mom. Woman. Then yeah. her mom was a single mom. And all these, you know, they would keep, you know, I know my grandma's, my mom, you know, you keep your little stash inside your bra, whatever the case may be. Uh-huh. And so. And look at uh, uh, those old cigarette cases with the little, uh, the little, little, the little pouch. pouch in the yeah. front. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You knew. You knew. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, why she can't tell me, like, how can we be a team? If she won't tell me, but but at this point I don't have that information about her background or my grand my great grandmother telling me. Yeah, yeah, and so and, and for me it was like okay this this not gonna work because you know we're not we're not on one accord on how to do money. Yeah. Um. Go ahead. And I remember I remember when you finally you know I guess. Again, I want to say this wasn't the first year, first two years. First let's go before because we got, let's go to the point before we resolve when we got to church and we were told that you're not one unless you have one account. Well, and that, that became. 
no wait that there were yes a that, financial that issue came, for us too they came along but before before then before the church um patrick did take the time to be patient with me to explain to me the reason for needing to know the finances it wasn't the I'm the head of the household. Right. You just give me the money. Yeah. Do what I, I say. Rrr, like it wasn't that. It was yeah. more so like, you know, tell me what you think. And you, do you think I'm not going to do, you know, you think I'm not going to handle the money well? Or, you know, wh- wh- what you what, what are you thinking? What's your reluctancy? Why are you holding back is the words he used. Why are you holding back mm-hmm. uh, on me? Like, and I was like, well, I don't know. I just know that. You just should tell me what it is that you need, and I'll just give it to you. And so when you said you didn't know, you really did know. You just didn't want to tell me. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that was mm-hmm. one of those things. You know how uh, men have men codes. It's kind of like the woman code. You just didn't say that I had a stash. You mm-hmm. know, you just you just keep it to the side, yeah. you know? And so uh, I think that, that too, in particular in the black community, but I just think in, when, when you I think, think about so we'll go ahead. Okay. When, when you think about women, period, um, a lot of times we have been at a disadvantage when mm-hmm. it comes to income, when it comes to uh, making sure that we protect ourselves. And so I think that that was just one of those things that as a mother, a nurturing and caring mother, mm-hmm. you just want to make sure that your daughters, your daughters are always taken care of. Mm-hmm. And so they t- we, we, we teach teach each other how to be sufficient. Um, and so I think very rarely do we ever get taught to uh, to to possess strength under pressure. So that would mean we're teaching from a place of brokenness, or right? Mm-hmm. Which is dangerous then, because that perpetuates the cycle over and over again. Even from a, from a male dominant, that uh, the man doesn't feel like he's a man if he's not making the most money in the marriage, mm-hmm. or if he's not r- running. The money, even though he's lousy with the money, See? he feels like as a man, I'm supposed to be in control of the money because I'm the head of the household. And not understanding head doesn't mean um, you, first and it everything. doesn't mean dominate, yeah. domineering. Mm-hmm. It means kind of leadership and delegation, mm-hmm. if anything. And one of the things that you always describe is servant leadership. Servant leaders, yeah. Servant leadership. So uh, Patrick did mention too. Again, we coming from a biblical perspective, so we give me to share our a church experience and uh, not to take away anything from uh, the church leadership. Uh, but a lot of times uh, it, it can be told like in a general way. And we try to general, we try to sp- specific, so I'm going to make up, I'm, I'm about to make up a word. We try to specificize, mm-hmm. make specific uh, something that's general. And so of course I believe that households should have a, have one account to make sure that the household is taken care of. But to say that all of the money, every single bit has to go in it, it one account. Uh, okay, you said they should have only one account. You're just saying it should have at least one account for all the for the bills. So I saying? like how you said it. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure, I'm yeah, trying to make sure that that's what you're saying. Okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And so, in a way, we were told that all of our finances were supposed to be in one account and right. we're supposed to work from there. Oh, Patrick and I did run into another a uh, roadblock uh, as far as <laughs> making sure, like, you know, having to ask or, you know, or, you know, having to, when I say ask, it's like, you know, it baby, I want, of- I want some candy. Can I get some candy? Oh, right. It's oh. like, you know, just, it, it was those type of things, like that accountability that was not explained with that one account. So like one that. of the issues that we ran into is, because at this, at this time we're writing checks. And so I think at this point I'm in charge so she finally decided, okay, you know, you're in charge of the finances. And I think we tried I decided to, to trust him. Yeah. So now, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow because down. Because there was a point where you wait, were wait, in wait, charge. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go to this trust thing. Now, what we are saying or what I am saying is that you need to make sure that the component of trust, it has been deemed worthy of the trust. If you know that this person is still wild and now they have a, an addiction problem, they don't know how to manage finances, right. 
Don't be off your rock, your rockers and say, oh, I'm just going to trust God when he didn't give you all the signs all the that he is mm-hmm. not or, or he or she is not the trustworthy. Uh uh-uh. So now, oh, and I'm glad you said that. Uh, said Proverbs and Proverbs 14 and 1 is say a wise woman builds her house, her, her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands, with her, with her own works of her hands. So what am I saying? Use wisdom in building. Mm-hmm. Don't just go and just do some random because, oh, Shamika Patrick said we supposed to do this. Like you need to stay prayerful. You need to search the scripture. You need to uh, uh, ask the Lord to give you peace and wisdom, Mm -hmm. guidance and direction. These are the things that you pray and ask for so that you can properly manage these areas that he has called us to manage in in marriage. This is why counseling is is so important, because had we had counseling, we probably would have figured this out earlier and it could have saved us some heartaches and some some. You know, some bad times right. or, some, or some frustrating times. I'm right. not saying necessarily bad, but it was just frustrating, financially yeah. frustrating. So, so one of, and then one of the frustrations because we only had one account, so everything was coming out of this one account. And I would write because again, at this time, I'm writing that I'm. She has allowed me to be able to be over the finance, over all about we finance. Agreed. Mm-hmm. We agree. So I'm writing checks at this time. It's doing check time now. I'm writing checks. She see there's money in there. I know, and this is probably it was it was bad communication on my part because I, I sh- would say miss, not bad. Okay, just bad it was though. bad miscommunication on my <laughs> part <laughs> because I should have said, "Hey, baby, the money is in there, but that's not there." But I never mm-hmm. said anything, yeah. and so because I didn't communicate that, this is why communication is so important. She would go and spend money, and I would pull my hair out because again, we're not. Again, all of the things I know about finances now, I don't know that then. Yeah. I don't know about a spending plan. I don't know about, you know, 20% save, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the the emergency fund. I don't know this. I just know all of us going in, all of us going out, and, and we're not making that much money. And all of the bills, all that we make goes out to these specific people, to this these specific businesses. And she just spent money, even if it's something that was... Needed, I guess so. It was like, like for I, was, I already wrote the check. Like that's not there. And so then it got to a point where she started. She felt this is this is in one. This is in another video. She felt like a little child because she had to come and ask for permission to like. And it just became an issue in our marriage because we were told if you are married, you have to have one account. You're not on one accord. If you if you're not one on one accord, if you have more than one account, and you know what that that one accord works, it's something that you that's interesting. You said that because you know we we were learning to use our words with each other too. They go back to that communication. So Patrick, you know the money was in the account, but he didn't communicate to me that the money in the account was accounted for. Mm-hmm. So all I know is that I saw money in there. And sometimes when you have come from struggle and poverty, mm-hmm. you see a. a decimal point anywhere and let alone a comma oh my goodness that shall come up come Mm -hmm. up you know come up anyway it's (laughs) comedian but anyway (laughs) you know you learned you know again we we had to figure out how to best communicate with each other and we had to figure out and discover work what worked best for right. us specifically yeah and so patrick did not like the fact that i felt like i had to come to him to get groceries like he said sometimes it was things that we needed i was never the type or, or i am not the type of wife that uh you know sneaking in shoes and sliding <laughs> in a, a purse right. like i'm just not big on that thing that i do like these nice things but it's not like, you know, I, I don't need those things to validate me to feel like I am a woman. And I, I don't want you to answer this question, but I do want to ask our, his wife, her husband, family. Why do women do that? Like, why do women sneak shoes and like, what's going on with that? Like, I do want to understand that. And, and if, you, if you guys are listening to this, like, put it in, a, put it in, a, in the comment section. Let me know. Mm-hmm. Why do women do it? Is it something that's from your childhood, you know what I'm saying? Or like, is there, is, is there, is there yeah, psychological, is it therapy? Like what, like what, what's going on that you would sneak? That means there's something not, there's some type of tr- mistrust there in the relationship. But so just let us know in the comments. 
Yeah, good part. stuff. So in anywho, uh, but yeah, so we did. We then went ahead and decided to to uh, figure out what worked best for us. Right. Again, it was not a lot of uh, headache and like bumping our heads against the wall, but we did know that th that wasn't working for us. Yeah. We were again unequally yoked. And I do want to say that I do believe that there are degrees to being unequally yoked in any area. It's kind of like on a spectrum, a spectrum, a, a scale from a zero to 10 or one to 10. Uh, some people may have more severe unequally yoked symptoms than others. And for me, going back to the money part, we finally figured out it was, it was, I feel like I was not, I felt like, I felt like. God wasn't going to be pleased with us as a couple mm. if we had more than one bank account or more than one, yeah, more than one account. Yeah. Because I, I really feared if we didn't do the way we the were taught, said, yeah. I feared God would do something bad to me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And not mm. knowing that that's not the God we serve. Yeah. And, mm. and understanding that there were certain things, like I think all marriages, I think marriages, I think marriage is like snowflakes. They all have a foundation Same substance that makes snowflakes, but they all have different shapes. Or to use something you just used uh, uh, a while ago, there are 7 billion people in the world. And all 7 billion people have their very unique thumbprint. You're not going to find another person. And I think each marriage has its own unique thumbprint. Their identity. That yeah. you have to figure out what works best for you or for your marriage to to be successful like mm -hmm. what what works meaning what works in wisdom and positivity not you know what i'm saying bro i got a whole nother account that she don't know about now i'm talking about really working toward and maybe we're just maybe we're as, as somebody said maybe we're unicorns maybe that like man that's for y'all marriage y'all do it but for me i like maybe that's it and if that's it why is that like i want to hear that too why is that that way and, and, and be, be respectful, you know, when you answer these questions in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. And I do want to say, too, uh, again, Patrick and I, uh, you sharing our story from, you know, we, sh we sharing a little bit of our story. We are also wanting to give a biblical perspective, meaning we want to give wisdom as to how to help you do the same thing. Um, but we are aware that our marriage is not your marriage and your marriage is not our marriage. But we do want to make sure that you don't give up and give in. Um, by not discovering and, and finding out how you can make yours work. Because just because your your uh, fingerprints are not like mine doesn't mean that yours are any less valuable. Or, uh, it, you know, it has its own uniqueness and you can get it done. Mm -hmm. So anyway, some solutions that I would like to So offer. one of the solutions that we had. He's still messing with me. I knew he was. Sometimes he just want to hear his voice with mine. <laughs> It's called being married, right? I guess so. Yeah, it's so being committed. Do we want to tell them what we decided? Because I want to. Mm -mm. Or is that in? in is know. that in what you what you wrote down? Okay, so if it's not in what you want, I want at least. Minute. Can I just go on? Because you just yeah, it might be. Well, we're already in the vein of the finances. Like I think it makes I'm sense to just go ahead and to do it. Just saying. Okay. Based on what we talked about, I thought when we got to that point, we would give, we would show the the what we did to be equally yoked, like what was our thing, and then we would give certain solutions. Mm -hmm. my... It's your only child syndrome kicking in. Go ahead. Anyway, so what we decided that made sense for us because she didn't like having to say, can I get this and can I get that? So what we came up with was one main count where all of the bills are being paid out of that out of that particular account. So what we came up with is like it's, it's all over the place right now. But <laughs> that one main count where we pay all of the bills. And then she had her own slush account. And then I had my own slush account. Now, here's the thing. Even though we may have different accounts or different banks. There's not a secret bank. You know what I'm saying? She has, her name is on the bank account at Citizens Trust or Citizens Bank. My name is on it. Bank, like whatever bank we are, 
So everybody has access to those particular banks, but it made better sense for us to give one for, and, and this is just the money. We just split the money up. Um, one for the main account, her slush and savings. And it's just my slush and savings. And so that was the solution that we came to. And thus far, I guess, what, 20 some years, maybe over 15 years, it's it's been working. I think it's been working. What you think? Put your little, put your little mouth poked out and stuff. It's working great. So that was one of my solutions. I just asked, I asked you what you're going to do that. So we want to offer solutions to help you build and sustain your marriage. <laughs> One is for everybody, have- for everyone who is listening to this on the podcast, go to his wife, one word, her husband on YouTube and look at Shamika's face and posture. Okay. I would like for you to develop and have a spending plan. Mm-hmm. Again, we're trying to build financial fortitude for our marriages. So one of the things is to make sure that you have a plan, a budget is what they call it, to help to Spend give plan. you clarity on where things go. They mean that, you know, we don't want to think about these things, but this is the truth, right? Is that at any point you can be without each other. And so you want to make sure that you know if there's a mortgage or a car note or insurance or whatever the responsibilities are that you have an, a, an accurate account of what is needed to, to, to be covered, mm-hmm. all right? And so that's one thing. Uh, uh, Patrick did mention about uh, the slush funds and accounts. And in some cases, um, what did I put? Oh, I put this, your splurge. And something that I think that caused the frustration in marriage is when uh, she can't get a new dress or he can't go to a ball game. It's just something about when uh, either one feel the pressure and the tensions of life and you work and work and work and work and work and, work and there is no fun. That is so frustrating. Like we are made for recreation as well. And I think we don't talk about that enough. So that's what that splurge is about, about you being able to do um, you know, to get yourself those things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. That is in order. And that is from the Lord. But prior to the splurge account, uh, before you do that, you want to make sure that you have a savings. Um, I put a savings plan and I put urgent and emergency. And so I know that Patrick mentioned about his dad having a ready cash in the house. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that would be something in case something urgent happened like mm-hmm. it needed to be answered immediately and you want to make he wanted to make sure that he was able to take care of have his family covered and so you want to make sure that you have those things again i know sometimes i know for me i'm just going to be honest sometimes when i don't see the commas i begin to panic uh, however it's something about when you work with the power of percentages it helps you all the more to get to the commas mm-hmm. eventually and so just be patient with it. Like find out what works. Uh, if it's 10, 10, 20, if it's 20, 10, 10, 40, like whatever it, whatever it is that works for your household, you want to make sure that it is some sufficiency that's there, that you have a savings, that you have, uh, of course, you like for retirement, emergency, uh, whatever the case may be that you are preparing for that particular uh, uh a destination in your in your life. Uh, so she she mentioned that one of the spending plans that I've coached people with, and that's the spending plan of 10, 10, 20. Uh, you want to give away 10%. It's just a law of reciprocity. It works. I don't know how God designed it, but it does. Uh, and you're giving with a cheerful heart. And that 10%, typically you look at a lot of financial gurus, they say take the 10%, that's you paying yourself. But that pay yourself, is typically they're doing in terms of investing. I'm I'm a little different, um, so I take ten percent that you would give away, uh, give it to your church, uh, widows, orphans, uh, whatever the case may be. Ten uh, percent that that becomes part of your splurge account. You take ten percent of your finance and you can use it to splurge on yourself. But twenty percent is for the savings. Uh, it's either you're building your savings account, or 
you're getting out of debt or you're building your savings account and getting out of debt at the same time. Um, and even for us, I know she, she, my wife is, she probably gonna be mad at me after this. We, we just got out of debt. So we're, I'm a barber. She's a manicurist and the pandemic happened. Business got crazy. And so we had, we went through a, a rough, we, we have gone through a rough patch for the past three, four years. So we've, we end up, especially during the pandemic, we depleted all of our savings like it's gone. And so it's up until recently we were able to get back into the savings plan. And we are, so she mentioned not seeing the commas. And so now we're at the point we have a little more discipline. Uh, we know exactly what we're doing. Our, our plan, like we just redid the, the budget and we have a goal that we're looking for. And so it's going to take time um, to get that. I think we're supposed to start using the envelope method for, for our groceries. And so um, we're getting back to the point because now we've kind of gotten rid of some we of the debt our and we're catching our stride back again. So, uh, But that only happens when you sit down and have a conversation, talk about it, write it down, pray about it, think it over. Like it does, You don't have to make a, a decision tonight or when you see this video or... It could be something y'all want to walk through and just kind of have a conversation about um, in terms of your spending plan. So there are two, and I'll give you both of them, 10, 10, 20, and 15, 15, 20. Uh, 15% you give away, 15% you keep to yourself, 20% savings. And all those I, I got from the scripture. Amen. Okay, and so Patrick did mention another thing um, that he said it without saying it, but it's like make sure that you make the necessary adjustments as needed and have a financial check-in. So prior to the pandemic and prior to uh, uh -huh, prior to, you know, all the things, the, uh, the unexpected things. Life right. happened to everybody. Like mm -hmm. everybody was hit was in the pandemic. Everybody savings, everything was depleted. But now the great, the gracious and the grateful part is that we did have something set aside and we did have friends and family that came through clutch for yeah. us. And so That's we dope. would be remiss not to say it. Like God indeed was faithful to two uh uh, service industry workers mm -hmm. that showed up as best we could prior to so that when our day of adversity came our friends and family came through for us yeah, that's good. they were the hands and feet of the lord and we are so grateful for that yeah. uh and so but anyway you want to make sure that you check in have a financial check in to just get uh to just get uh you know, a feedback or reading of the numbers don't lie. Let me say it like that. The numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay for you to look at it. I know a lot of times when it comes to math, that is a lot of people's least favorite subject because it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Either you see what you want to see or you don't. But the beautiful part is it is that whatever you put in, if you add it up, it's going to be adding up. If you subtract, it is going to subtract. It's just, just going to do what it does. I just thought about something too, that I'm, I'm I think, I guess I'm, I, I am. I'm, I'm grateful that we got. I think maybe we did start in the beginning, but we got out of the stage that, you know, your money was your money and my money was my money. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what that became. I'm not just going because I'm just thinking about it. And free, 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 I mean, freely talk is that that became an issue. There wasn't it wasn't ours. We weren't we weren't a team. Again, we were unequally yoked. Like and I made this. You too. made that. You handle this. I'm gonna handle this. As opposed to, okay, look, let's let's throw everything in the pot. Let's figure out what's what can we do. And so, for me, I'm I'm blessed to the fact that we we came out of that my money, my money, your money, your money stage, mm -hmm. or your money, your money, my money, your money stage. Yeah, because either way it go, it's frustrating when yeah. it's not uh, allocated properly. It's frustrating. Right. And so, uh, and so then the next thing would be decide who is the better with the management of finances. That's good. Like if you know that you can't handle commas and decimals, mm -hmm. don't try to jump in and do that. But now by by by, you know, I would say by the same token, you want to make sure that you are able to. Uh, know what to do with those commas and decimals mm -hmm. because it, it would be an injustice to the marriage. Because again, anything can happen. And so the truth of the matter is, is that you want to make sure that uh, the better is, oh, you know, the, the better is the spouse that's managing the finances, but that is not a permission slip for you to neglect 
learning how to manage well as well. That's good. And then here's the thing too, and businesses do it. So marriages need to do it as well. Uh, so even when like we just, I said, we just redid our spending plan and I told her, you know, like, let's, let's look at it again in three months. Like we don't know what happened because she and I just thought back working together again and we're not sure what's going on, but, 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 boom. But every three months, we look back at the spending plan again to see where we are. Are we on track? Are we off track? Where are we getting off track? And typically when I'm coaching people, I I have them to do that themselves. Like look at your past three months and see where the money is going. You follow the money. Follow the money. Because that would be a type of tracking. Like you want to track your finances, track your spending. Do you want to know what's coming in? I know a lot of times we talk about income, but very rarely do we talk about outcome. Right. So now a lot of times we want something different, but then you're not even, you're not, you don't even have a true assessment of what has truly come in. Then when we get what's coming in, we just, I know sometimes I know I would do it in a minute. I just ball out like, wait a minute. That was accounted for. So one of the things that that budget plan or that spending plan does is that it serves as a reminder. Uh, it's like a memo about the, the responsibility of the finances. So I don't have to keep asking Patrick over and over again, where the money, what are we doing with it? He, he can just say, check the budget, see what's in the budget. Yeah. So, uh, hold, on, hold on. No, no, no. You pause. No, hold on. no, no, no. You, no, you interrupted me. Because no, no, so. I was saying, no, follow so, the so, money, so, follow so, the so, money. So, so, so. And then you start. So follow the money. <laughs> A lot of times I tell people to look at the money. If you follow the money, the money will tell you what's really happening. It'll tell you what what you care about the most concerning your money. So if if to use what Shanika said when she uh uh talked about tracking tracking the money, it's track the money. Like um th- that helps to that helps to figure out where to go to next. Cause it, it helps you come up with a next step going forward uh, in your marriage. And it also helps to find problem areas. And so if you're doing this every month, and it probably needs to be done every month or every month or every three months, depending on where you are, to get together and look at this and, and be open. Like if so if you're if you're if you're watching the accounts and everybody's name is on the account and everybody can pull it up at the same time, then it's hard to hide money and it hopefully Make you uh, a little more honest about what you're doing with the finances, whoever's in charge. Okay. And so another thing to add into, I hope this is helping y'all, but another thing to add to uh, when you're, when you are uh, doing your financial check-in, also check in to see, to ask about how the other person is feeling. Patrick just recently started doing that and that has helped out a lot. Because sometimes when uh, we talk about finances, again, it's not a favorite subject, but uh, it's like, so what are you feeling? Like you make a decision, you come mm-hmm. up with a plan. It's okay for you to ask each other, how do you feel about this? Mm-hmm. Are they feeling optimistic or is this just kind of like this is another assignment? Like it's not exciting or I'm very mad. I'm frustrated. Like it's a time for you to be able to communicate what it is that you are, that what you are experiencing and then pray and ask the Lord to give you a cheerful heart. Because guess what? If he don't give us the power to get wealth, it is not going to get gotten. Mm-hmm. And so we want to make sure that the work that we're doing, it is something that we love to do, that we can show up giving our best. And then when it's time for us to actually implement the plan, then guess what? We still showing up, giving ourselves the best because this is the, the what the Lord has given us to be able to properly uh, build and sustain our legacy. One of the things that helped out for our 25th anniversary, we had a goal that we wanted to meet uh, for certain things. And so that may help out as well. Like have a financial goal. Have a shared goal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah a, a shared financial goal and come up with a plan to meet that goal. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's so fulfilling. For us, for that particular anniversary we, we did the and this now if some people say i can't do 20 percent sale that's fine but f- find something to put back uh for that year we did the 52 week challenge backwards doubled yeah and it was so exhilarating yeah and so but we so it, we were it was in the envelope in the envelope in the envelope in the envelope boom 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 boom, boom, boom. that by the time it by the, when it got time for us to go out of town we could breathe a little bit more uh, 
for that particular um, anniversary. Now, our time is just about spent, but I do want to share this. And when we did that, as we was doing a 52-week challenge, backwards, double, <laughs> life still happened. Yeah, that's good. Life still happened. Man. The unexpected stuff came up. And me and Patrick had to hold each other yeah. in each other's arms to say, praise God, it was there. Yeah. And because we didn't necessarily eat it up, you know, like we wasn't uh, we wasn't faking each other out, mm -hmm. you know, we're saying, well, oh, we can do that. Like we wasn't making emergencies. We weren't making desires emergencies like, no, mm -hmm. we really did put our heels down and mm -hmm. we put our ten toes in to make sure that we had a good a slamming 25th uh, anniversary. But when life happened, guess what? We held each other. We cried with each other. And we were able to pray and say, Lord, this was beyond our control. Yeah. But we asking you to bring this back. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he did. He yeah. brought it back. Because it was beyond our control. It's stuff that you just couldn't plan for. I think it's, um, I forgot the guy's name. One of the guys that come on YouTube. But he talks about when you have saving set aside and problems and well and things come up when you don't have the money it's a problem when you do have the money and issues come up it's just an inconvenience yeah so you want to be more on the inconvenience side than you are on the problem side amen and then the last thing that i would like to say which I, it probably should have been on a, on the front end is that pay attention to the tension of the spouse in your house so you will know like you can tell, you know how sometimes you go in a room, like if you go, let me, I ain't gonna say a room, but sometimes you know how you can go into a place and you can feel the tension in the wall. You can be like, this is not a happy place. Mm -hmm. Like I can feel the energy is off. Like it's just like we are not working together. I believe that the, the proper term is synergy. That means that we're not flowing together as a team. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that. And so if you are experiencing tension in your home and and the spouse that you share in this house with is not becoming a home, then it's a problem because the whole purpose of purchasing a house is to make it a home. Mm -hmm. That's that harmony. Right. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to uh, that joy or that glee in your spouse's eye. Mm -hmm. Make mm -hmm. sure that he's. <laughs> happy make sure that she's happy and do those things to make her feel good put a smile on her face right. make her feel pretty every day so man you got to stay on your p's and q's so here's what we want you to do for you for those who are, are watching and listening um i'm pretty sure we've faced it if it's if it's possible send us issues that have arised that you were unequally yoked in like leave that in the comment and we'll look at it and we'll grab some of those because I'm pretty sure we have a story um, about us not getting along concerning that particular issue. And then we'll give you our story, like what surrounded, what was going on with the story, you know, what was her thought process about it, what was my thought process about it, and then um, the resolution that we, we came to that, that helped us um, begin to grow in our marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, pay attention to the tension of the spouse and of the house. I thought it was the other spouse in your house. Sorry. In my notes, this is what I have, Patrick. Pay attention to the tension of the spouse and of the house. I didn't, I, I said it wrong at first. That is correct. I said in the house. But thank you of for, yours, thank, thank you for owning up. You're welcome. To, uh, you're welcome. Mistake. You're welcome, hubby. Established 1997. All right, listen. So, uh, <laughs> what else? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, it. that's all. all. All right. We love you guys. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.